Welcome, and thank you for joining us for another one of Mike and Billy's Whiskey Reviews. By now you should know, I am Mike and this is Billy, and today we bring you the Lafroy Triple Wood. Hey. Billy, 48% ABV, non-chill filtered, unfortunately artificially colored. It is our one... Oh, can I ask you a question? Two, three, fourth Because you're smarter than me and sexy. Why do they artificially color? You know, a lot is, there, is there an actual reason for this? Like, I think that the reason why distilleries color their whiskey is I think people look at the whiskey color and say a dark whiskey is better than a light whiskey. So I'm fine. I'm going to spend fifty or hundred dollars. Debatable. We have drank some whiskey. very champagne colored whiskeys that will just knock your tits off. You know what I mean? So here's what I also don't understand. This is a green bottle. And most Isla whiskeys are in a green bottle, Lagavulin, Laphroaig, yada yada. And they're all artificially colored. I can smell the peat already. And why? It's a green bottle. Who even who even knows? Right. Well, when you pour it, I guess. So and also I've heard But you've already bought it at that point. I don't know if this is true or they not. You got your money. I don't know if this is true or not. Uh, for instance, milk in a in a in a regular glass bottle milk, it will definitely affect the taste from the UV rays hitting it. So uh, Heineken and mm -hmm. all those people, their beer bottles are darker color, mm -hmm. so the UV lights can't get into them. All right, which so would affect their taste somehow. I don't know how that's a fucking thing. Let me tell you something about. Let me let me tell you something about UV lights. UV lights are a clear bottle. Obviously, lets in all the all the UV light. Green bottle only takes five percent out. You want to start over? No. And then brown takes out ninety percent of light. Yeah. So green really doesn't take out a ton of light anyway, so that's really not... How do you know that? Like, I this guy know. knows crazy shit, always. All I'm saying, if it's only cutting out 5% of the UV light, what difference does it make? I think it's the color, I think, and oh, plus it's I in a tube. I smell it. Just plus it's in a tube. Can you smell it? Yeah. All right, oh. so let me tell the folks oh. a little bit about what triple wood means. I'm just going to stand over here and smell this. Triple wood, it means it's matured in three different kinds of casks. <clears throat> it's a mixture of ex-bourbon barrels. Are casks made out of wood? Oak wood. So we're gonna go with ex bourbon barrels in this quarter cast, which are just simply like two hundred gallon cast, two hundred or four hundred gallon cast. So they're basically a quarter of the size of a sherry butt. And then finally, the third type of wood is European sherry. So again, American ex bourbon quarter cast and American ex sherry cast. So all three of these into one. Now, a sherry mature Lafroy is not something you get very often. Yeah. It's just not. It's usually ex American bourbon is their thing, but they do do a PX cask, which you is. You said do do. They do do. You're right. They do have a <laughs> PX cask, which is Pedro Jimenez Sherry. So I would imagine. We've been drinking. So I would imagine it's Pedro Jimenez Sherry, quarter cask, and then an ex American bourbon barrel. So again, this should be your typical punch in the face of a Lafroy with a little bit of sweetness from um, the Sherry cask. But. Instead of guessing, let's figure there, out. There is a weird sweetness. I'm not going to lie to you. There is a weird sweetness. But the very first, the very, like, you guys might have seen me smile when I'm sitting over here. The very first thing I caught was like a smoky, bacony. I I tell you what, Bill. Everything's in this nose. Every, literally. Amelia's feet are in this. So it is that typical Laphroaig smoke, but then sweetness from the sherry cast. Heat. A sweetness and nuttiness from the normal Lafroy cask. Don't forget the peat. So yeah, super smoky. There's so many, again, smoky, medicinal, iodine. But the medicinal is so subdued. It's almost like you almost want more of it. You know what I mean? It's it, In that way, it's sort of similar to um, Ardbeg Ugadale where, man, it's smoky and it's peaty, but it has this overcoat of sherry from the sherry cask. Oh, yeah. It probably just has a little bit of in the sherry cask in yeah. there. Yeah, like you... I kind of want more of it. Like I'm like, I'm searching. I'm, I'm literally like looking for more. And what I hear, Billy, is this is not three casts that are combined together. It's a bunch of ex-American bourbon barrels, maybe each for five years. Or, this is a guess, by the way. Maybe each for five years. So put in a quarter cask for a couple of years, and then those same quarter casks shoved into a sherry cask for the final maturation, maybe for, I don't know, a year or so. It's I, like a turducken. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> At least that's my guess. Um... Whiskey turducken. But it is, it is, it's a, it's a different nose because Lafroy and Sherry, to me, is my first experience with Lafroy and Sherry. It's like a damp Lafroy. 
It's a musty, damp Laphroaig on the nose as compared to the super medicinal 10-year-old, 18-year-old um, quarter cast Laphroaigs that I've tried in the past. Anyway, Bill, what do you get on the palate, my friend? It's gorgeous. Tell me more. Mm. Beyond the harshness, there's like a... Oh my god. I gotta... I... I gotta try one more time. Boy, it's... Oh, there's a spice immediately. Cinnamon, oak, um, there's vanilla, there's, there's, there's a fruity, there's a ripe fruit characteristic to it. I'm struggling to put my finger on what the fruit is. But it's just, a, it's a good mix of so many things. I do a lot of woodworking. There's like a black walnut. I'm cutting wood. It's like a sawdust characteristic to mm -hmm. it, almost. Mm -hmm. Oily on the palate. Oily as hell. It coats the shit out of your mouth. It sure does. Sorry for my language. Um, super oily. Oh, it's, it's making my mouth water. Yeah, it's savory. <laughs> it, is, it is. It is. Like, with most smoky whiskeys, you almost feel like they're a little bit sweet at first, and then as soon as you exhale, it's smoky. But the really good one's like a good Highland Park. It's nutty. It is nutty. But what I was gonna say, like a good Highland Park, once you kind of swallow it down and you exhale the smoke, then it dries instantly, yeah. and then it becomes savory. It is dry and savory, yes. And that, yes, yes. Yes, and that is very reminiscent, in my opinion, of a good Highland Park, like you know, an 18 year old or a 21 year old Highland Park. And it does have those character. This is a very different Laphroaig than the Laphroaigs it's, we've it's had a before. Very, it's complex. It's not like the lower, it it's not like the 18, it's not like the 10. Wow, you know what? I. Like, I can't even... I'm sorry, guys. I can't wait. I gotta... Put a little bit more water. Let me tell you what I'm picking up on the smell. Oh, everything just got softer. It really is a linger. It is on the a palate. gorgeous. Go like, I, can I have this? Sure. When the video's over, this is mine. I just, Thank you. There is more of a fruit element in which okay. you add water. Wait, wait, wait. How much is this right now, today? Like, 70 bucks. Like, $65. Uh, third quarter, 17, 60 bucks. 66 bucks, something like that. It, it's not expensive of a whiskey. There's no age statement. It's an as whiskey. It's 48% ABV, though. Raven could afford this. Th this is essentially like the same price as like the Ardbeg Boogadale here locally and say like um, a Glenn Fittick 15-year-old. Uh, Basically the same, just to give you an idea of what the price point is here for us here locally. I think it was, I think it was $62, but with tax, 66, if I'm not mistaken. But I tell you what, with water, it this, just, it smells amazing. Awesome. Like, he, he dribbles the water in, if you've seen our videos. But it does such Scared. a huge, it does such a huge thing there. This, again. It's so much softer and sweeter, and like, I want to take a nap on it. If it was a pillow, I would just, girl, I'm laughing. This, this is another ah! example. This is another example of how, sorry. It's all right, excuse us. We're at my business. This is another example of how uh, there's another phone right water actually helps this type of whiskey out pretty well. So again, this is another whiskey that the water I think has added to the experience rather than take it away. Just I agree. like that Glen I agree. 18. I agree. I want to see what it does to the old palate. Tongue and tongue. Let me know. Hit it. I'll do it. So again, with water, what I'm getting is. I'm still getting sweetness, not as much sweetness. I'm still getting oakiness, not as much oakiness. I'm picking up more fruits. I'm picking up a little bit more sherry on the nose when I add water into it. Wow. It's just a really good, different Laphroaig. You know, I, I'm a huge Laphroaig fan. I think we both are. I love Laphroaig. I love the face-smacking peatiness of it. But you add a little bit of sherry. Wait. Man, smoking cherry goes together well. Billy, what do you pick? Wait till you try this. Tell them, tell them to people what you get. Holy shit. I mean, that was a, the, the first taste we had was great. The water, like if I was going to drink this at home, I would get an ice cube, a small ice cube, put it in there, not for the uh, effect of chilling it, but for the effect of watering it down. That was such a better drink to me. Dram, gallon, guzzle, blah, blah, blah. like, I'm going to put this in my pocket. Everything got softer, everything got mellower, like... But you still get all of it. Nothing went away. Nothing hid. Nothing hid. Everything was still there. But it was just so much more like laid down and sort of... It's amazing how for 48% ABV and a heavily peated whiskey, how smooth that is. You know what I mean? I don't know what happened to your bottle. 
it, it is really amazing how smooth that level of ABV in peat smoke is when you add a little bit of water. The sugar really does wonders for it. Oh my God, right? It's so sweet. You know, I've heard mixed reviews on this whiskey. Some people are like, oh no, if you like you either Lefroy, hate or love. Yeah, yeah. Even people who love Lefroy hate it or love it. But right? to me, this is really a nice piece of work from Lefroy. Um, I'm not, I, H statements I'm not scared of, but I tend to be more critical of a non H statement because I'm just assuming it's a younger whiskey. But sometimes you really put together a nice combination of flavors. And this is absolutely one of these type of whiskeys. Billy, where are you at as far as the score? I'm going to be honest with you, I'm at an 88. I'm right there. 88. That's yeah. exactly what I was thinking. This 80 out of 100. I mean, it's really good whiskey. It smells fantastic. Oh, God. I oh, God. I almost feel like the nose outdoes the palate to some degree, but it, True. Has, True. it has a great finish. So I, like, I want an incense that smells like this when I burn it. So, like, if you had on a scale of 1 to 10, 10 being the highest, 1 being the lowest, taste, or excuse me, nose, taste, finish, I would be at about an 8, a 6, and an 8 as far as the pie chart goes. Like, I really think it has a great nose. It's a really nice palate. Yeah. But it's a really I, nice finish. Yeah. I really like to, again, I keep going back to it. It feels like a good Highland Park in this regard. You swallow it. It's smokier than what you picked up on the palate. Swallow it. Then it's drying. <laughs> and then it's savory. It has that savory, it is, it is very savory. meaty, savory, smoky it characteristic is. to it. So, yeah, we're both at an 80 out of 100 for the for the amount of money this is. 66 bucks roughly, Holy. including tax here in Columbus. He's not getting it back. Um, it's a buy. I mean, why not have this bottle? You bought it. I mean, uh, it's a buy. It's all right, a buy. So, if, if you don't mind, we got to do a little bit of uh, business right now. Like, share, comment, sh obviously share. share. Obviously. Why would you not share this? Are you kidding me? <sighs> share it. Share the love. And subscribe. Please. Yeah, please. Yeah, you, you've made it this far. A smash the like button. Comment, though. Comment. He will get back to you. This is the guy. Every single comment that's left, every message we get in our inbox, this is the actual guy you're talking to. This is not like a computer plugging program. Get with us. Let us know what you want us to drink. You know what I mean? Like, we love that shit when you guys tell us what to do. Anything else you want to add, Mike? And if you couldn't tell by my sentence structure and spelling, um, I'm obviously not a computer. No. Responding to these yeah. comments. But you like talking to all you guys about whiskeys and seeing what you guys think. Because I tell you what, Billy, I know you don't read all the comments like I do. I don't read any fucking comments. He does. But we have some really good uh, viewers that give me great information. You know, when, when I'm talking about a whiskey, I'm like, for instance, when we did um, the Spring Make Local Barley 16 year old, oh, yeah. I said. They do three different kinds of whiskeys there. And I said, they do the Spring Bank, they do the Long Run. I couldn't remember the other one. Some guy was like, it's Hazelburn, man. So, you know, that's what I love about, you know, doing this whiskey challenge. What I love about you guys' you. comments. That guy, thank you. Yes, you guys, I mean, in many ways, know more about the whiskey than we do. We're just two regular guys. Well, not, I, don't, I don't think that's the case. I don't want to say who knows more than who. Like, let's not make a pissing contest out of this. Some people have eclectic knowledge and other people have eclectic knowledge. And sometimes those knowledges run over to each other. Here's the thing. Me and Billy are regular guys. Let's just let's just be regular. We just want to drink whiskey. There are people here that know things whiskey. we don't. There are things we might know that they don't. That's what it's all about. Mm -hmm. so Why is the grass green? Why is the sky blue? I don't know. This, the sky's blue because the sun's rays. I blue totally blue. stole this right. Huh? Anyway. Huh? Anyway. Oh, uh, anyway, thank you for joining us. For another one of Mike and Billy's whiskey reviews. Amanda's pissed. Whatever. And, as usual. And as always. Happy drinking. Till next time. We'll see you in the comments.